Okay, if we were in a hybrid scenario and we wanted to add this room kit as an exchange room, I'm going to show you how easy that is. Now, if you're if you add this device as a room, then anybody can schedule meetings with the room and when they walk into the room five minutes before the meeting they'll get a big green button to join the meeting uh, the spark meeting so let's take a look at how that's done we go to places if I remember right there's a guy right there Anson's office 2 we go over here click on that and we're gonna get this services edit I believe it's right in here and right in here let's turn on this guy this calendar now this is available to me because I have hybrid calendaring as part of this as part of this uh, spark instance so I'm gonna turn that on and I'm gonna go next and what it asks me for is email address of the calendar mailbox okay well that sounds weird to a Cisco guy but to an exchange guy that's gonna sound very familiar so let's head over I'm already logged into my Office 365 tenant that is integrated Spark hybrid calendaring integrated into that Spark instance and what I want to do is I've got the Exchange Admin Center up and I've gone to recipients and I've gone over to resources so this is the regular mailboxes and I've go, go over to resources and you see I, I've already done this before with another system what I'm gonna do um, and just just real quickly if you're not familiar with what room systems are in exchange or kind of a different user like a calendar only user they're not they're not used to authenticate or anything like that they are used for equipment resources are traditional this has been going on for a very long time when they want to book a room or something like that and then there's attributes inside this particular active directory object where you can add you know hey 12 people can fit in here it has a TV it has you know a spark board you can add attributes like that to the system which you people usually do exchange admins usually do it's a it, you know we're going to do the very basic of basics here but it's basically a calendar for something and in our case it's going to be that thing is going to be a Cisco Spark room kit and then you can either you know tell it to, to auto accept any meetings that get scheduled with it or you can give it delegates and let's say there's an, an administrative assistant or something that's you know in control of a floor that has you know I don't know 10 rooms and each 10 each of those 10 rooms has room kits in there and she kind of schedules everything and makes sure you know there's not going to be um, you know people haven't scheduled a room for something else or there's not going to be any visitors there or anything like that so there's this concept of delegates and that's uh, something typical that you'd find in exchange rooms so how do we do how do we uh, create one very easy we go over here we're going to do a room mailbox and let's just get, let's stay with the same name uh, office 2 and email address oh I think it was sorry I did office office we want Anson office 2 and we'll do the same thing there let's say Anson uh, 2 and uh, we'll leave it at our standard domain location you know we'll just put and uh, eh, we don't need a phone number we could put the URL in there from or the URI and we'll just put 10 okay we'll save that let me go ahead and um, there it looks like it created so it looks like it's okay go ahead and edit make sure that comes up okay okay so uh, we have a few more options there and as I said you can do booking delegates right this is where some uh, administrative assistant or some assistant is gonna on behalf of you know accept or deny um, or decline you know meetings that are gonna be booked in this room okay so right now we're just talking about a room we have some booking options here you can read about these you can Google these uh, pretty self-explanatory 
uh, allow recurring meetings, allow scheduled meetings to only during working, working hours, always decline the meeting if, if the date is beyond, you know, 180 days. Typically, I mean, self-explanatory things here. There's nothing um, really earth-shattering here. That's our office. That's our uh, email address that things are going to be sent to for booking this room. And then we can, you know, a mail tip, you know, that would come back to somebody if they're booking the room. Uh, and then here the mail mailbox delegates as well. Okay. So that would be the mailbox delegates versus the booking delegates. Now this is usually what you do, only need to worry about here. But anyway, that's easy peasy. You know, um, again, an exchange person is going to know how to do this. And then what's going to happen after that is we know the email address. And all that needs to be done now, this Anson's Office 2, so Anson Office 2 at vzucas.com. Then we'd call the Spark guy up or and then uh, give that email address to the Spark guy. So here's the Spark guy now, and he's just going to put Anson Office 2 at vzucas.com. Save. Now what's going on here, remember that the connectors are involved. Okay, and if you don't know what that is, you can watch my Spark Hybrid or my explanation of Spark Hybrid and that will kind of clue you in on really the details that are going on behind the scenes and what happens here this will be pending a activation and what's happening in the background is there is some things going on uh, in the background and what's going on is you know my exchange environment out here let me grab a pen real quick here we go. I have an exchange environment out here as part of 365, right? And then we have, you know, this connectors. Those are expressway C's. Just think of them as Cisco connectors. We'll call them CC for now. They kind of connect to Exchange Online. And then they also connect to the Spark Cloud. All right now, we just told the Spark Cloud we created a device in here and put it in a, in a space, in a place. And it, it, it got an email, right? There was an email address there for this guy. There's an email addy. It was Anson Office 2. Okay, and, and then Exchange, we went and created the room. And we gave him that addy, that address. Okay, now there's some things going on between these two entities. So there's some, there's some uh, communication going on through this connector that's um, kind of gluing these two together. That's highly technical speak. <laughs> uh, but they're kind of gluing these two together so you can schedule the room and then when you schedule that room in Outlook, what's going to happen is the big green button, the big Cisco join button is going to come up on the screen. So that's what's going on in the background. And um, we'll put that away there, okay, and I'll refresh this. I'll probably have to pause the video. Uh, it'll probably take a little bit to, to activate completely, but... Okay, now you can see Anson Office 2, Cisco Spark Room Kit, and you can see this guy right here activated. So this usually takes about 24 hours. There's some ways to force it, but usually 24 hours, and you're going to see that activated there. All right, everything looks okay here. And um, now we can continue. And we are after the green button. What is that all about? When we have this Spark Hybrid calendaring. What is that all about? How does it work from the user's perspective? So we are in Spark. And I'm just going to go to a Spark team space. I'm going to do your typical meeting here. I'm going to create a meeting invite. And the scenario is, I'm going to create this meeting invite, and on my floor, let's say I'm an exec, and on my floor we have a we have a room, and that room has a Spark Room Kit, and I want to have my meeting in that room, and I just want to walk in that that room and start my meeting, join my meeting. So that's what we're after. 
So we got our meeting created and what I'm going to do, we got everybody in there that's in that space. I'm going to add a room over here in Exchange. And remember, that's the one we created. Remember, when we clicked on, we gave the, where we created the calendar room resource in Exchange. There it is right there. We've already connected it to Spark, as you saw before. And now all I'm going to do is add this room to this meeting invite. That's it. As easy as that. This comes up and says if I want to update the location. I won't do that now. I can. We don't really need that Spark uh, thing there because we have Spark over here. I'll go ahead and do that there. And I'll send that away. Okay. And we saw who was in that, uh, who's in this space here. It was Jessica, I think. And Hanson dot Garcia C. All right. Let's just go see if Jessica got that. That over there. She did. Let's say we'll do your normal. All right. And let me go see one thing you want to do or I want to do in this demo is make sure that that meeting is pretty soon because I want it to show up. I'm going to back that up just a second. The green button doesn't show up until a few minutes before the meeting, so uh, it's 5.15 here. I'm going to back this up to 5.30. Go ahead and send an update. We'll, that, we'll uh, let that update for a second, and I'll pause the video. Okay, and there you have it. You can see the meeting up here on the screen, right there, and then down here on the kiosk, I have a meetings button and inside that meetings button you can see it says um, you know there's one there's something there I get a little blue one so there's one thing pending there and it's the join alright so um, that's it and we can click on join and we join that meeting so again you can walk in in your room and as long as this system is part of the meeting you just walk in and you hit a button so this is not using proximity or anything like that. All the magic is kind of in the background. It's through Exchange and Spark Cloud. Again, using Spark Hybrid Calendaring and the connectors. So hopefully that's uh, clear to you and you see how that works.